All right, Congressman Joe Barton joining us now in studio. He represents uh, parts of North Texas, Arlington and Ennis, uh, a couple of your, your areas where you spend a lot of time. Congressman right. Barton, thanks for being here. To Glad talk to be here this. tonight. Um, let's talk specifically about how this has affected you, the tragedy in, in the short term. Um, you had an event today, right? And you had to take some precautions, not for your safety, but you, you actually made a call and found out if they still wanted you to come. Tell we, me a little bit about We had that. an event dedicating the new terminal at Arlington Municipal Airport with the Super Bowl coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, we've worked very hard to get that terminal built. We called the local uh, mayor, uh, Mayor Cluck, and uh, police chief and asked if they still wanted me to attend. And what was your thinking on that? Well, I didn't want p people to not attend because they were afraid, since I might be there, that there might be some threat to their own safety. Um, tell me about your thoughts when you heard about this. And tell me about your relationship with the Congresswoman. You know her. You've, you've kind of I, traveled I know, a know her. She's a, a kind of a moderate Democrat. Democrat from Arizona. I actually spend more time talking to her here at DFW Airport, waiting either to to go to Washington or uh, coming back to, uh, where she has a, a layover in Texas. Uh, she's very quiet, very shy, very personable. And uh, when I first heard about it, I just I couldn't believe it. And I was just getting adjusted that she had been shot and killed when we found out. Uh, that she was still alive, and and that was a, a, a was great joy. Mm -hmm. But six other people so were dead, and then I think 12 were wounded. So right. it, it's just t it's an attack on democracy. It's attack on, on people's first rights amendment to petition the Congress for redress of grievances. And I don't think we can let one man man intimidate the entire country to not participate with Congress in what we need to have as an open dialogue. As after this happened, and ever since, everybody's been kind of parsing everybody's words and trying to look at stuff. And I think this has gotten very convoluted, and we'll talk a little bit about this after the break with some other guests. But uh, in a slideshow that you emailed some colleagues last year, you said, I'm going to read some of this. You said you wanted to be the General George Patton in the battle against the Obama administration, saying, put anything in my scope and I will shoot it. In the context now, that would be getting a lot of attention. Well, you talk to me about that. In politics, we use a lot of sports metaphors and, and also a lot of military terms, but it, it's not literal. No, I of mean, course not. Yeah. I was. I wanted John Boehner to be speaker, and he would be Eisenhower, and and Eric Cantor, who would be the number two guy, would be Bradley, and I would be the tactical field general, which is what General Patton was in World War II. But it doesn't mean literally we're going to try to to use some sort of physical force against our our friends on the Democratic. Side of the Does it bug you the kind of take that's going on right now with commentators and opinion makers and even some politicians? Well, politics in America has always been a, a contact sport, mm -hmm. as Lloyd Benson used to say. Uh, but it's not literal. I mean, some of my best friends are liberal Democrats, and I vote against them and, and speak against them on the floor in committee. But uh, then we'll go on a trip together uh, and, and, and have uh, dinner and drinks with, with their families. So right. it's, you know, we, we have to be able to express each our clear feelings, but that doesn't mean uh, in the political arena we are trying to incite violence. That's just not acceptable. You, you, some of the some of the congressmen have uh, congressmen and women have been talking a little bit about maybe concealed handgun or maybe carrying now and taking some extra measures as far as that kind of thing goes. Do you see yourself uh, taking? I have an extra two people step? on my staff that are licensed to do that. They do not carry weapons on duty for me, uh, we're going to work with our local sheriffs and police departments. Uh, we're going to be more prudent about security, but we, we're not going to put up a barrier between myself and the people. The people need to be able to feel safe coming to my events, and I certainly have to encourage diversity of opinion in, in what people uh, uh, have public interchange with me. And, and you said earlier, you, you do this kind of event all the time. We've got to wrap it up. We'll go to the break here, but you do that kind of event all the time out there talking with I've people. I've done over 15,000 public events in my public service. All right. Congressman Joe Barton, thank you. Now, now still ahead on Fox 4 News at 9, we, we got into this a little bit, the political posturing and the words of violence and that kind of thing. We're going to talk about if there's a link to political rhetoric that we hear a lot now on TV and radio and this violence, if there's a link to that at all. We'll be back and talk about that after the break on Fox 4 News at 9. We need to do a little soul searching because I think it's the vitriolic rhetoric that we hear day in and day out from uh, people in the radio business and some people in the TV business 
and what we see on TV and how our youngsters are being raised. That this has not become the nice United States of America that most of us grew up in. The anger, the hatred, the uh, bigotry that goes on in this country is getting to be outrageous. And unfortunately, Arizona, I think, has become sort of the capital. The Pima County, Arizona sheriff says a lot of the blame for what happened Saturday on vicious partisan politics. But does political posturing really breed violence? All right, we're back in studio now. Congressman Joe Barton still next to me in Fort Worth. Fort Worth Star Telegram columnist Bob Ray Sanders and right next door in Studio A, radio host Jeff Bolton from 570 Cliff, all with us to talk about this. Now we're going to kind of transition, guys, into the, the more of the rhetoric side here. Bob Ray, I want to start with you. Defend the people who say, because they're your people, defend the people who say this is Sarah Palin's fault. I'm not going to say this is Sarah Palin's fault, but I think that the uh, sheriff is, is correct when he says that those people who speak those kinds of divisive, uh, hate-filled uh, speeches and language in, 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 our, in our country today, and we've had a lot of it, particularly in the last two years, must take responsibility for their words because words have meaning. Words do uh, ha have, have some kind of impact on people, particularly those who are deranged, uh, disaffected, and, and, and out there waiting to be told, given instructions what to do and unfortunately some of those instructions come maybe not literally but they certainly come in context from people in congress even and from people on talk radio Jeff, that is a Jeff, you're on talk radio go i think it's an outrageous and irresponsible assertion to suggest that rhetoric uh, is the cause of any anything like this tragedy it's an insult to the families that an arizona sheriff would hijack the grief and prayers of people who are struggling tremendously right now and make it political law enforcement officers across this country are shaking their heads in shame today at the actions of this sheriff what the sheriff should do is be a peace officer his political opinions and desire to become the, the next bob ray sanders can wait until he's retired he needs to find out what happened in this case he needs to investigate it and be done with it. There is no place for violence like we saw, but there's also no place to inflame it with not a shred of truth that rhetoric had anything to do with this tragedy. And that kind of started early. I want to show you what has kind of come out of this now. There's been posturing. I mentioned Palin off the top. Her crosshairs ad before the, the midterm elections, uh, this last election. But, you know, in 2004, before the midterm elections then, the Democratic Leadership Council put out a similar map, not the, uh, not the crosshairs. This time it had bullseyes on it, though very similar. And this is kind of, Congressman, just to how it goes. You say this military type talk in politics is just how it goes, and it's not trying to inflame anything. Well, we use military metaphors, but we don't mean it literally. Uh, you know, we've had congressmen challenge each other to duels back in the 1800s. You had the civil rights debates. We had the Red Scare of the 50s. I mean, Congress, I mean, politics in America has always been a contact sport, but we don't take it personally, and we certainly are not trying to incite people to do physical violence on, on other people. Bob Ray, you mentioned politicians. <laughs> Some of their talk too. Yes, I did. With all due respect to Joe and 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 I mean Congressman Barton, and I can consider consider him a friend because and I'm not being disrespectful. He knows that. But when he said, you know, we don't take it literally. In the last two years, what we've been hearing coming from talk radio as well as members of Congress and people during the elections, when you hear things like, don't retreat, reload, what does that say to somebody who's already in balance? When you, when you hear things like, we must stop this man, in this case, the President of the United States, by all means necessary, Malcolm X was accused of inciting uh, violence when he used that same term. When you hear things like, okay, if we can't get a political solution, let's deal with a Second Amendment solution, that says to me, guns. That says to me violence. That says to me that at some point the people making those kinds of statements have to be held accountable for what they say and for the actions taken by those who may hear them and then act on them. Well, I'm willing to be held politically accountable for what I say. I mean, I have said some things 
recently that uh, caused a lot of consternation with the, uh, my comments on BP. But, you know, I have never attempted to incite anybody to do fiscal violence against anybody else, and I don't think any elected official of either political party has. Well, Jeff, I, Jeff where's this coming? And Joe, and Joe I'm not accusing you of that by, by any means, but there are some who know what they're saying. And, and one of them not backed off. And the, and the ones who remain silent when other people are saying it, they're just as culpable as far as I'm concerned. Well, the, the problem is President Obama is not one of the people remaining silent. It was only a matter of weeks ago when the Bush era tax cuts were extended that President Obama said that Republicans were hostage takers, Bob Ray. Please, you can't have it both ways. Deal in facts, yeah, yeah. deal in truth. And don't suggest to me or the rest of the American people that the actions of a deranged man who is mentally ill, who may not even be mentally sound enough to stand trial is speaking for people on the right. It's totally inappropriate. You, sir, are adding flame to this in the aftermath of people still today in critical condition. These people can't even pray for healing. They can't even pray for their losses in peace without this kind of discussion going on. It's silly and it's yeah, an insult please. to the families and the vast majority of American people understand the metaphors to which a congressman speak. But I will say this. I'll give you a free one tonight, Barbara. I don't believe Republicans or Democrats in any way should be using the kinds of targeting and military type metaphors in politics. I will completely agree with you on that. If you and I can't okay, well, why, discuss well, why not, Jeff? it, if we can't discuss it in an empire of ideals, then let us not discuss it at all. But don't tell well, me that your own President Obama, who you defend almost all the time when I speak to you, don't tell me it's acceptable when he uses terms like Republicans or hostage takers and discusses hostages getting taken. Hey, how about Please. this? Do you guys have, we got an ad, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, West Virginia, I don't know, pulled out all the stops, whatever. Rifle shot the cap and trade bill as part of a political ad. You remember this? We, we, we've talked about uh, this. Uh, uh, yeah. It happens on both sides. That's why the yeah, but what, what is it about our politics? I mean, we've always in Texas, of course, had p politicians go out and, and shoot, in, in some cases, a kill deer, let alone a dove uh, flying over. We've had people shooting deer because they have to prove that they love guns and all of that kind of thing. But at the same time, Richard, what, what we've got to understand is there was something about about this election, this election cycle, where people felt they had to talk about guns, they had to talk about insinuating violence, they had to talk about targets. Michael Dukakis one... rode in a tank, Bob Ray. Michael Dukakis bounced around in a tank. They all do it. This is my point. Well, well, you got to be fair to both sides. If, if you're going to, if you're going to remember this Texas expression, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And Congressman but... Barton is sitting here, and you, you know this is going on on talk radio all across the country. And you, you, here you are. How do you respond to this? Well, we talk tough and we use symbolism and some of that symbolism has a military connotation but again no political leader of either political party uh, is trying to incite violence or is in trying to encourage others to go out and do do violence against their fellow man. Let me go or over no talk show host. Guys, let me go over Bob Ray doesn't try to do that either. Let me go over some things here. There's a, a Repo uh, excuse me, a Democrat out of uh, out of Maine, newly elected I believe, wants to change the name of the repealing job killing health care law act because it uses the word killing. Um, there's a, another one that uh, doesn't think, uh, the, that wants to outlaw the idea of those, putting those bullseyes and those targets. Th this knee-jerk reaction thing, is that too much or is that what we ought to well, be doing? We well, we have to give the, well, give the American public credit for having some native intelligence and thank common you. sense. Thank you. Well and, said. And, I, and, and I, I would agree that kind of thing is knee-jerk, but I would also urge us to say this. Listen, we will, we will pause for a week. The Congress is, is silent for a week. And, and, and here we are, you know, uh, singing Kumbaya and sitting around. I guarantee you that as soon as we stop with the candlelight vigils, as soon as the wind is blown away, those makeshift memorials, we'll be right back to our usual selves. And it is disrespectful. It, it is that kind of hateful rhetoric that will come even from the hallowed halls of Congress and certainly from talk radio. We will hear it and we'll be right back to where we are. The abnormal uh, has become the normal in America, and that is sad. I'm waiting for somebody to stand up and say over and over, not just on a day like this, that what is being said, what is being done in the name of free speech is wrong. So I'm Bob not Ray, Bob Ray, to ban it. Bob Ray, remember My that. Man here, Congressman Joe want... Barton says this has happened for hundreds of years. Well, no, and, and it has, and it will continue. Let me, Bob, Bob Ray, let me tell you what I did today, and I'm not being pious, but as a believer, I incited my audience today with every bit of my, my moral and ethical and spiritual fiber to pray, for believers to pray 
for the congresswoman, to pray for the families that lost people, to pray to get on their knees and beseech God to save those people in the condition that they're in today. That's what I did on my show today. So don't tell me oh, okay. that talk radio exists to incite people to violence. No, we don't. We incite people to think. And on days like today, my friend, it is my job, it's the job of every talk show host in America to do what we should be all doing as Americans instead of discussing this silliness for which there is no proof that rhetoric is responsible for this tragedy. We ought to be doing what responsible Americans do. We did it today, my friend. We asked people to pray Jeff, for the wounded Jeff, me, and to pray and, for the dead. Know, and ahead, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad you're praying, but let me just suggest to you this. Here we are talking about praying for people, and, we, and we're fighting the uh, enemy from without. There is an enemy within. You know, violence is a very much a part of American politics. It has been. I can start with John Wilkes Booth, but I, I could go back further. And, and, and whether we talk about Lee Harvey Oswald or, you know, uh, Sirhan Sirhan or any of the others, James Earl Ray, we could go down the list. Violence is a part of, of America. But at the same time, you know, we, we pray today, and then we go out and pray that our enemy be destroyed, and we're not talking about the enemy within. Bob Ray, that's what not what people, that's person? not what anybody that I know that is credible in any way is praying for. Congressman Barton can tell you, any, anybody can tell you, the use of these metaphors, we can argue about whether or not they're appropriate all day long, but the truth of the matter is, there is not a talk show host in America, I have never heard one that has incited people to violence, period. There has been no call to arms, and when people call By my, my program all the time, Bob Ray, they say, well, it's time to pick up our guns. No, it's not. Our forefathers did that so we could go to the voting booth and do it. Let's what ask, you are describing what, is not happening in the way that you describe it. That is inaccurate. What, 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 what does it mean that if not a political solution, a Second Amendment solution? That's come from talk radio. That, I'm, let, it, I'm, I'm sure it's come from talk what radio. I'm sure it's come from the Internet. I'm sure it's come from newspaper columnists. I'm sure it's come from what bloggers sitting in the basement somewhere. Bob Ray, again, you are taking there, these odd, there are, rare, there are examples here. as if they're policy, and Jeff, they're not. Jeff and Bob Ray think there are a lot of layers, and you can... You can peel back the of onion course. from the sure. you know, talk radio and all the way out some small blog on the internet that's just wacko out there. So it's it's hard to get all that reined in. I want to ask you, Congressman Barton, one last thing before we kind of wrap this up about this uh, the name of that bill, the 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 Job Killing Healthcare Law Act, and even the the, the bullseyes and the crosshairs. I got the impression from you that you wouldn't mind seeing that kind of stuff go away. Well, I would hope that we'd have enough sense to pick metaphors and things that make more sense than that, that particular particular name and I certainly hope that Bob Ray uh, remembers what he says when he, the next time he wants to write an editorial about me that he shows peace and love and tolerance uh, I've had some <laughs> I have Joe you know I've done that <laughs> wow so, yeah we were singing know, kumbaya just worked, a minute ago it works both ways and uh, uh, but I do agree that the political tone hopefully will become milder and more uh, positive. I do think that would help uh, given what's happening. Congressman, I'm going to tell you that the only way that's going to happen is if the American people have an approval rating of Congress greater than 15%. Yeah, we we do need to improve that a little bit. You know that. We're, we're going to work on that in the new Republican majority in the House of Representatives. All right, thank you. Jeff Bolton, uh, 570 Cliff, Thanks, Bob Ray Sanders, Fort Worth Star-Telegram, thank you. Congressman Joe Barton, thank you for being with us again for this segment. Thank you all.